In our last session, we read a letter from a woman who was baffled at the angry response of her boyfriend, Carl, when she merely suggested that he might take a particular exit on the interstate as they drove in an unfamiliar part of the state. I talked about how crazy it is that such conflicts occur a lot in our lives, and we really don't understand why. Real love is the key. If people don't have enough, they're on the edge of survival, and then it takes virtually nothing to set them off. Now, back to the writer of the letter. So first you have to understand that the primary problem in that situation in the car was not you. This understanding is everything. The primary problem with Carl was a lifetime of not having enough real love in his life. Let me briefly summarize a metaphor that we've used before. On two separate occasions, let's imagine that I pat you on the back as a gesture of greeting. I come up behind you and say, hey, and I just give you a little pat. On the second occasion, however, you have a severe sunburn from head to toe. Your inclination after you hit the ceiling and screamed would be to blame me for hurting you. But clearly, that is not the case because I did exactly the same thing to you on the first occasion and you were not hurt. The reason for your pain on the second occasion was really your own carelessness for lying out in the sun. It was the sunburn not my behavior. It's the same with you and Carl. Without enough real love, we all walk around with emotional sunburns, so to speak, all the time, so that other people hardly have to do anything at all in order to hurt us. Now, let's look into the situation with you and Carl even further. Without enough real love, we get our sense of worth from whatever forms of imitation love we can find. Although men and women certainly cross over in their forms of imitation love that they tend to use, it is an accurate generalization that men, like your boyfriend Carl, tend to use power to fill up their emptiness more than women do. This should be pretty obvious. I mean, come on, who starts all the wars on the planet? Men. And go to any football game. The idea of winning is everything, and winning is all about power. The goal is to pound your opponent into the ground until he is a bleeding, motionless, defeated, simpering symbol of your power over him. That's the real goal, until he becomes a shining testament of your absolute mastery over him. It's all about power. You think I'm exaggerating here? Watch what happens when a defensive end slams the quarterback to the ground and then stands over him with that glowering expression, pumping his arms into the sky like he's conquered the world. You'd think he'd just discovered the cure for cancer. Watch a basketball player who has just slammed the ball into the hoop over an opponent and then gives the other man that in-your-face look like, I own you, you fool. You are my little boy. You are my slave. No, I'm not exaggerating when I say that for most men, it's about power. And it's not just in sports. We do this stuff everywhere. Men get angry in traffic if anybody dares to cut in front of them or slow them down in any way. They make business all about power, striving to beat their opponents for the deal, the promotion, the whatever. Now, what in the world does power have to do with your making an innocent suggestion about taking an exit on the interstate? Oh, a lot, and we'll talk about that in our next session.